follow the sport and icon. Now, this is a fight card that I know a lot of people have been almost forgot about and it's been overlooked. And a lot of that is down to the whole Wilder Fury situation, um, not just because of the fight coming up and all that. And this past weekend, Tyson Fury got robbed. So there's been a lot of talking points around that fight and it's going to continue because more and more things are coming out each and every day. And in fact, several um, articles and several statements and several things are just coming out about that fight. So this card here with Kel Brook has gone under the radar. So this will be a matchroom event this Saturday in Sheffield, and he'll be taking on Michael Zarafa uh, from Australia. So we'll get on to that fight in a minute, the main event, but I know that a lot of people are not too interested in it um, or emotionally invested in it because they see this as a tick over fight for Kel Brook. But bear in mind, Zarafa's only got two losses. Kel Brook has got two losses. So we don't know quite know what's gonna happen, but Kel Brook is ultimately looking to um, take on Amir Khan. So he's taken this fight to keep the weight off and straight off this back into camp to hopefully get a fight with Amir Khan. But as we know, go check out my previous video there from two days ago, Amir Khan has been offered a chance for a WBO welterweight world title against Terence Bo Crawford. He's been offered $5 million. Now he'll get more financially fighting Kell Brook, no doubt about that, but it's a world title and Amir Khan wants that fight over Kell Brook. Had Kell Brook um, had known about this one, then who knows? I think that maybe he would have chose a different opponent and potentially made an assault on the world title. Maybe not the world title itself, but something like that. But at the same time, this is for the WBA mandatory or a final eliminator, at least anyway, for the WBA super welterweight. So Jarrett Hurd's title. So all going well in this fight, he should ultimately get um, Jarrett Hurd next if the Amir Khan fight doesn't come off. So that'd be an interesting one. Jarrett Hurd, he said that he wants Kell Brook as a tune-up to help him prepare for Jamel Charlo. I'm not too sure if you can look on Kell Brook as a tune-up, but if he does, great. As much as I like Jarrett Hurd, I think that um, Kell Brook, for me, he'll be the one I'm cheering on and hopefully gets the business done over Jarrett Hurd. But ultimately, this is the fight that we have right now. So Kell Brook versus Michael Zarafa. So I'm not actually gonna cover it. I said I was, but I've just done it. Um, anyway, um, there's a couple of good fights on this card, so we'll get cracking on that one, and I'll give you what I know about any of these fighters or the fights that I believe are interesting. Drop your thoughts below, subscribe, and all that kind of good stuff. So, Shaquille Thompson will be the opening bout, and he'll be taking on Konstantin Alexandrov. Alexandrov is 8 wins, 36 losses, and 3 draws. So, a journeyman, but this is Shaquille Thompson's second fight. Very good friends with Kell Brook. Um, Kell Brook has almost put him under his wing and rates him very, very highly and believes that he could go on to achieve great things. So for those of us here in the UK, we like to keep an eye on our prospects, watch their progress and hopefully see them at some point in a world title fight. And by the time they're in that world title fight, we kind of know a fair bit about them just to see if they're going to be good enough at this point. Either way, Shaquille Thompson, middleweight, will be taking on Konstantin Alexandrov in the opening bout. Well, I say opening bout, this is Matchroom's opening play, so they could change on the night. Um, another one will be Terry Harper, 4-0, and oh, and he'll be taking on, uh, sorry, she will be taking on Farish Mashori. And um, this is for lightweight, this is a six-rounder, two-minute rounds, of course, for, for uh, women. And she is 4-0, and oh, and Mar Mashori is six wins and one loss. Um, Terry Harper, again, I mean, she's a kind of local. I mean, uh, she's from Yorkshire, uh, from Denneby, but we'll have to wait and see how she gets on um, because this one is not exactly a a fight that's probably going to get into a world title opportunity, but she does have another fight in February already booked, so maybe overlooking this one potentially too early. Uh, but but either way, I mean, she does look pretty good because uh, she took on Beck Connolly, who um, I know and... I've been trying to get on the channel for quite some time now, actually, and I do make, need to make more of an effort to get Beck Conley on. But anyway, um, Terry Harper will be taking on Farish Mashouri for six rounder at lightweight. Um, Callum Hancock, he's eight and O, oh, and this will be at super middleweight, taking on Ivan Nikolov. Ivan Nikolov, two wins, four losses, and one draw. So they both had almost the same amount of fights. Hancock, eight, Nikolov, seven but Callum Hancock looks like he could be the business we we'll have to wait and see but I said eight and oh super middleweight so could Callum Hancock join the ranks of the prospects for super middleweights from this country joining the likes of 
Cody Davis and Jay Cage and many others coming through. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next up, Anthony Tomlinson. Now, a lot of you guys will know him. 8 and 0, oh, welterweight, and to be taken on Innocent Anuanu. I don't know who that person is, but a journeyman, 25 wins, 38 losses, and three draws. So quite stiff, you would imagine, um, with um, Anthony Tomlinson. I said he's 8-0, and oh, uh, but only three of those by stoppage. Um, now, he's a local lad as well. He's from Sheffield. So we'll have to wait and see what he's all about. Um, so far, not the biggest punch in the world, but certainly one to keep an eye out on. So anyway, yeah, Anthony Tomlinson will take on Innocent Anawanu. I think I killed that name, but oh well, it is what it is. Next up, um, a guy that a lot of you guys know, Kwash Ashfak, and he will be taking on Jay Carney, and this will be a sixth rounder at Super Bantamweight. Now, Ashfak is 3-0, and and his opponent is five wins, three losses, two draws. So you wouldn't call him a journeyman, but he's not looking great at the minute with that kind of record, but who knows? Maybe he was fed to the Lions too early. We don't know, do we? But Ashfak, for me, I believe that he could be one of the, one of the guys that we could be looking at going, oh, maybe a world champion one day. So keep your eye out for him. And we have the return of Kid Galahad. Featherweight going up against Brian Marina. Um, Brian Marina, 10 wins, 4 losses, 1 draw, for sure, for Kid Galahad, who's 25-0, and 0, he's looking at the winner of Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton, um, I believe he's actually mandatory for that now, right, so this is a keep busy fight, bearing in mind um, he fought on the Boston card not so long ago, so this is a quick turnaround for him, again he is part of the Dominic Ingles um, team, so, so uh, Team Ingle. So it'd be good to see Kid Galahad out, getting a couple more rounds under his belt, but I would fully expect him to walk through Marina. But anyway, it'd be good to see him. Um, Anthony Fowler is also on the card, super welterweight. So yeah, he's fighting in the same weight division as Kel Brook. Wouldn't that be an interesting fight? Or, but ultimately, I know the fights that we'd all love to see, Anthony Fowler and Ted Cheeseman. That would be an awesome one. But where does um, Fitzpatrick fit into all this and quite a few others? We'll have to wait and find out. But Anthony Fowler has yet to have an opponent announced. So we still don't know with only a, um, a couple of days left to go. You can imagine it's gonna be a journeyman, a tick over fight, all that kind of good stuff. So we'll, so we'll have to wait, wait and see. And we have my neighbor, Josh Kelly. He'll be going up against David Avanesian. Um, of course, David Avanesian, he's been there, done it. He's been around the block several times. Josh Kelly, 8-0, the Commonwealth welterweight champion. And David Avanesian, 23 wins. Three losses and one draw. Out of those 23 um, wins, he stopped 11 opponents. Every three um, losses, he's only ever been stopped once. He's from Russia, but he resides here in the UK, in Newark, um, in Nottingham. So not too far for him to travel from Nottingham to Sheffield. Not too far at all. But he has been in with some pretty decent opposition, Lamont Peterson, and that was for the WBA World Welterweight title. So he has challenged for a world title before, and that was only three fights ago as well so this is a massive massive step up for josh kelly it really is he's also been in there and defeated shane mosley again a over the hill shane mosley shane mosley was 49 wins nine losses and a draw um, at that point uh, back in mid 2016 um and i mean that's pretty much it for as far as big names go um he did lose his second pro fight as well so yeah i think that David Avanesiem is a real stiff, stiff competition, but he did lose his very last fight against a dude I've never heard of, um, Kavalans Gas. Anyway, 18-0 that guy was at the, um, at the time. And in fact, since then, I think that uh, that Kavalans Gas, he's, um, I, I, I believe he's still undefeated, but there again, I suppose he would be. It's only February of uh, this year. So yeah, yeah, in fact, in fact he's 21-0 now. So he's been in with some pretty stiff competition, but Josh Kelly, for me, he's a guy who I believe will be world champion at some point. And even right now, he could give a good run for his money against the likes of Keith Thurman and Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn, and um, Terence Crawford, uh, Errol Spence Jr. He'd give a good run. I'm not saying that uh, you know, he's going to beat them, but he could certainly give it a good run. But ultimately, who knows what's going to happen after this one. Um, for me, I wouldn't mind seeing him take on Jeff Horn. 
to be honest. But would Jeff Horn want to carry on at welterweight? Probably not. I'd imagine Jeff Horn will be back up at, um, or will probably float around at super welterweight from now on. So maybe a Kel Brook versus Jeff Horn at some point. Anyway, going a little off track there. So Josh Kelly, 8-0, six wins by knockout. So for me, I do believe that Josh Kelly will be world champion one day. And I'm predicting that this particular fight could well be the fight of the night. If not, then it could well be John O'Carroll. Um, I like John O'Carroll, the crazy Irishman. I think that uh, he's a little bit on the on the nut side. He's 16 and 0. He's like a Wolverine kind of guy. Um, and he's going to be taking on Guillermo Fuenwa. Um, 46 wins with only one defeat. So certainly a very, very tough guy for John O'Carroll. Um, of course, this will be at super featherweight and this will be for the final eliminator for the ibf world super featherweight title so he wins this one he gets a crack at a world title um, john o'carroll so anyway his opponent Jelome fuenwa is from france he's 35 years old and as i said one hell of a resume it really is or record at least 46 wins one defeat but don't let that fool you too much because out of those 46 wins he's only ever actually stopped 12 of his opponents so not the biggest puncher in the world you wouldn't say uh, but likewise i suppose with john o'carroll as well not exactly the biggest puncher in the world 16 wins with only three stoppages but he fights like he wants to take your head off and that's what i like about him um, he is like a, a damn werewolf but his opponent he hasn't been in there with anybody that you would really kind of rate in my opinion uh, but who knows how good he really is i mean clearly he's got the engine to go the distance which is going to be a bit of a problem for John O'Carroll if he's not fit and ready. But he's only one defeat. He did lose to a guy who was 33 wins and one defeat at that point. And it was for the uh, European Super Featherweight title and he lost by unanimous decision. So he hasn't, hasn't been stopped. And just looking at his record, he's never actually hit the deck. But maybe John O'Carroll can actually push him to the deck. It doesn't really matter. John O'Carroll, I hope, wins this one. I like John O'Carroll a lot. I really, really rate him. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing him take on the likes of Tevin Farmer in that, or Tank Davis or something like that. But either way, we'll have to wait and see. And then we come to the main event, Kell Brook versus Michael Zarafa. Michael Zarafa from um, Australia. Yes, a lot of Australians are coming over to the UK lately to take on our guys. And each and every one of them has lost so far. Could Michael Zarafa upset the apple cart? Michael Zarafa has said Kell Brook is overlooking him. And I think he's probably right. I think he is overlooking him. And potentially for good reason. But who knows? This is boxing. You never know. If Michael Zarafa can land that one punch and put out Kell Brook, then you would imagine this would be Kell Brook's final fight. So who knows what's going to happen. So if you're a fan of Kell Brook and you can get to Sheffield, go get your tickets. Or, or, or in fact, if you're a fan of any of these guys, so I believe there's plenty of tickets left. I don't think many have been sold. Was it 5,000 or something like that? So not a lot. As I said, a lot of that has been overlooked, I think, because of the whole Tyson Fury situation this past weekend. So drop your thoughts below about this card. Click that thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.